This episode is brought to you by Chris Express Drugs, located in South OKC. For all your sports medical needs, call 405-735-3950. This episode is also brought to you by Emmy Labs. They have partnered with the State Department of Health in Oklahoma to bring you free COVID-19 tests. Go to www.emmylabs.com to find a testing location near you. Yes, sir. That's a major move. Welcome <laughs> to another episode of How Basketball Saved My Life. I'm your host, the Easy Button. Boy, it's one to And we have a very special guest in here for y'all today, my man, F.A. Udo. What's good, my man? Man, doing Ooh. good, man. I appreciate y'all having me on. Man, where you at right now? Currently, I'm in Cancun, celebrating one of my brothers. Cancun. Hey. That is fire, man. Well, we have a 10-year vet with us right now, former lottery pick in 2010 with the Golden State Warriors. He attended Michigan, then Baylor, and he went to Edmond Santa Fe. I hear you were a, uh, a uh, former, what was it, a McDonald's All-American nominee. Is that correct? No, nah, that wasn't correct. I, I was low-key during my, um, my recruiting, but I, I did enough in order, in order to get a, a D1 scholarship, you know, so that, hey. that, it all worked out well. Listen, man, ain't nothing better than late bloomer because that's when you catch people by surprise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you're a league champ. Um, shoot, you're a league first team. You currently play for the Beijing Ducks. Am I right? Well, that was last year. Now that I'm a free agent. Year. And um, we finished up in early August, and uh, I've been trying to get my body together and then get back right for whoever, whatever team I go to next. Copy that. Copy that. So where are you from for the people that don't know F.A.? Man, I'm from the great state of Oklahoma. Grew up in Edmond, Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, parents Nigerian, so that's definitely in my blood, all in my DNA. You don't, uh, you don't speak it, do you? I, I, rep, I don't speak it. I grew up, you know, somebody asked me that question a couple weeks ago, and I, I told them I grew up more American because of hooping. You know, being able to, to, to leave in the summers and go play go play on these traveling teams. And, you know, and during the year, it was all basketball for me. During the year, it was all basketball. So when did you pick up a basketball? When I was about five. It was a neighborhood sport. We had grew up in Meadow Lakes uh, neighborhood. And, you know, it was me and another guy who would just always go up against the older players in the neighborhood. And that's how we were able to improve, you know, vastly, you know, growing up. Was you always the taller kid on the block? For the most part. And then I don't know if the folks know uh, Drew, Drew Haymaker. We was teammates early, you know, he was six, eight young. So he was always the tower. Um, but in, in, in our area, I was, I was usually the tallest or, or one of them. So you started picking up a basketball at five years old. Dude, that's mad early. That's mad early, dog. The game, the game didn't change. You know, we was outside on, on the concrete court, you know, steel rims, chain link, uh, net. Yes, sir. Getting after it. <laughs> getting after it. Um, oh, the same. That, that's, what, that's what made me who I am today, you know, um, just coming from them humble beginnings, man, and, and, and pushing, pushing that rock up that hill, man. I'm still doing that today. I had to wonder, because since I moved to Oklahoma, it's hard to find that outside basketball. So I had to wonder where y'all was getting all this hoop talent from, because you don't see a lot of outside basketball. No, you don't, man. You, you, you don't. You really don't see people at the playground, for real. <laughs> this Everybody, generation, definitely. This generation is different, man. They, they, they on, uh, you know, the TikTok streaming, they, they, they uh, whatever, PlayStation game. You know, but they, they, but you know, the kids in Oklahoma, they've been able to to make a name. You know, a team Griffin last year, they had a really good run with the Peace Jam, um, and we yes, got some. Shout out like Kellen McCoy, shout out Kellen, that's my yeah, guy. Shout out Kellen McCoy, uh, DJ Lemons, Blake DJ Griffin, Lemons. And, and all they doing. Um, but you know, we have some, we have some dogs coming up. I know, haven't really been able to watch them, but the Bryce Thompson, um, yeah. people are high on him. So you know, just just root for everybody. Hey, Alexander. You know. Ray Alexander for sure, Bijan, um, you know, the well, young man. Is. The young man from Ada, he's at A&M now, Jackson. Jackson, um, Robinson. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we, yeah. we have the talent. We just got to continue to, to, to come together 
um, folks who have played the game, you know, continue to, to feed it back into the community, man. Because it's that's one thing the young guys did well is use the social media to their advantage. It's one thing yes, they sir. do right now. Oh, FA, yes, what sir. would you have done if you had social media back then, like how they do now? I wouldn't. Have, I really wouldn't. Have probably, probably been on it because you know, growing up with Nigerian parents, man, they don't really be, they don't really be with all that. Yeah, they straight to first. it, bro. These, these books first, you know, you hoop. Okay, good job, but we're going to the library. Let's get to <laughs> it. <laughs> Let's get to it. So I probably wouldn't be on it as much, man, because I would just be, be locked in on hoops. It would still be the same thing because the neighborhood we grew up in, um, you know, we didn't have it all, but everybody, common ground was, was, that, was that basketball court. So you 6'10". Who do you get your hype from? Man, my dad's father. So my grandfather was seven feet. Ooh. Hey, there you go. Then my, dad, <laughs> my dad, five eight. My mom, five two. His, <laughs> his, you know, when people see me and my mom, they like they can't believe it. it no, nah, bro. For real, man. I'm it's, six four. My dad, my dad was five ten. My mom was five four ish, and I got my height from my grandfather. He was like six three. So. I guess it's really it's really what it matters. So if my son get my dad's height, he gonna be a shrimp. So knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> knock on wood, bro. We don't need that. I see That's a trend a right now. <laughs> I see a trend right now, bro. So, man. So you started hooping at five years old. Do you think if you would have started later, that you would have still had the same success because I'm a late bloomer myself. Antoine, he probably started hooping as early as you did, right, Twan? Yeah, I was in the mix. The basketball <laughs> course outside, yeah, the basketball course outside used to boom. I'm from California, so okay, you know, yeah. A lot of the stuff I got was from the outside court. So starting at a young age was easy for me. Well, FA, I'm Haitian. I was born in Haiti. I didn't move to America till I was about eight. So y'all was already hooping. I was still kicking mm -hmm. around the soccer ball. Right? right, so I ain't pick up a basketball till uh, summer eighth grade. So hearing guys like y'all start so early, I started so late. I just wonder, do you think that you would have had the same success if you started late? I, I think if uh, if I was in the same setting, for sure. Um, if you change the setting, you know who knows? Because that was what we did. Like the way you played soccer uh, back home, that's the way we was we was hooping. So if you change that setting again. We playing a different sport than, than probably not. True. I guess, yeah, it's got to be setting. It's got to be setting. I mean, mm -hmm. if you were, you know, you, you were in Edmond, right? So if you were, mm -hmm. I don't know, down in Norman where they playing, you know, football left and right, what, right. what do you think the outcome would be then? Would you be a football player? No, well, I wouldn't be a football My parents wasn't rolling with that. They were like, yeah. no, nah, you're skinny. You know, you're going to play basketball or you ain't going to play no sports. So I'd still play basketball, but I don't know if I would be at the level that I am because, like I said, it was me and another uh, another one of the guys growing up. We had to go against all the older guys in the neighborhood. So we was getting beat up, and then they would give us, you know, some some guidance afterwards. So, I mean, I realize, that's very important, man, um, to have kids go up against – older guys, you know, and really test them. You know, we had a parent ask us, um, you know, his son is about to go into middle school. And mm -hmm. uh, his his name's Hazeman. Shout out Hazeman. Okay. Hazeman's about Hayes? to go into middle school, and he's about to try out for middle school ball, and eventually he wants to try out for high school ball. And he asked us, he said, what do you think is the most important thing for him to do to get ready? And Twan and I both said, you need to play up. I mean, I told you, I started playing late, but I had an older brother who was six years older than me. And so playing, yeah, I started late, but I was playing up so far up that I was able to catch up, you know, a lot faster. So right. um, when did you feel like you guys caught up to the competition when y'all were playing up? As far as playing up, we caught up for me. I would say ninth grade, freshman year. I mean, uh, middle Wait school. Minute. Middle school, I could have played up, but not at that varsity level. Um, but my freshman year, I, I could have played varsity. But my high school coach had to put a rule in that if you couldn't bench one thirty-five, you couldn't play on varsity. What um, the Hoopers? Yeah, that's yeah. dope. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie, I but, like that. But towards the end of the year, he, you know, I, 
he changed up a little bit. But then I got hurt, so I wasn't able to play. You know I what I mean? That, you know, he seen I, that I, talent. Yeah, so, but, you know, it all worked out, so I ain't tripping. How'd you feel about the rule when you first heard it? Ah, uh, you know, I, I felt like it was trash, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling him now. I mean, he's like a he's like a, a father figure to me. Uh, coach Guy Hardacre. He uh, coaches the women's team at UCO. Shout out, uh, Coach. And he's my guy, hundred percent. But I hated that rule. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Like one thirty-five, but I can play. You know right. what I mean? You ain't saying that to KD. You no, know, KD will pull up and, right. have to pull up and I can't lift one thirty-five. I like uh, it though. I like it though because it's like, show me. I need to make an exception. And it sounds like you showed them. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 yeah, we definitely did that. That's what I'm saying. So it, 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 I guess the rule wasn't so much for you, you know, what I mean, as it was for others. But at the time, he was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make this rule." But then you, you showed them. You know, what I'm saying Ain't nothing better than showing and proving. Right. For sure. So you said you was under the radar in high school. So what'd you do to show out to get these big schools like Michigan after you? Uh, just, just kept at it. You know, at first I started with athletes first. Uh, well, I started with Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma Red Hawks. That was early age. We we grew that, and then we all went to the athletes first. And then a couple of years, I, I didn't really like what was going on. So then I, I went to a team in Texas called the Texas Blue Chips that was ran by Mitch Malone. Okay. And I, I was able to, you know, to play my game um, and get in front of these coaches at these tournaments. And when I went to these tournaments, I was able to play well um, and then continue that momentum into, you know, high school ball as well. Because we was a 6A school, so, you know, we pretty much played against the best talent. Right, uh, right. So, so that was the way for me. And then, you know, I almost wasn't able to make it because of that ACT. Because my, yeah. my, my grades were okay. You know, I ain't going front. You know, my grades were okay. And then I was planning to go to prep school, right? Mm -hmm. So I was playing in spring ball. We had went to a tournament in Dallas or whatever, and I was I got back the night of prom. But when I got back, my AT, ACT scores was there in the show that I got a 20. So after I seen that, I text or I call one of the assistants at Michigan and say, yo, I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> Just like <laughs> what that. Were you, what, were you, school. what were you expecting to get on the ACT? The first time I got it, it's like a 16. Yeah. I was like, ooh, I knew I had to get like a 19 and above, you know, to, to, to be eligible. So I was like, well, I ain't trying to do, I ain't trying to go to prep school. So we just gonna put everything we got into it and you know, see right. what happens. Um but you know, to miss your to, to miss your prom, you know, as a senior, that's tough. But, that's you know, key. It's, that's it's that was a major I key. To do. I had I had to do, I had to go play just to continue to get the looks and then you know, God came through. You know, blessed me with that 20, and I was gone. You have your own separate prom after that. You hear me? <laughs> hey, look at God, bro. I mean, look at you now. Would you imagine, can you imagine if you'd have went to prom instead right now, what, where you'd be at today, bro? Just dancing for no reason. Just dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Just dance. That dance would have cost you, boy. Hey, listen. <laughs> that dance would have cost you. You might have had a good night. <laughs> but uh, that would have cost you, man. So I got to ask you, man, what type of – what other types of uh, 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 sacrifices did you make along the way? And before you answer that, what was your high school GPA? My high school GPA was a 2.7. 2.7. I wanted to touch on that because it's very key. Kids, you know, they're like, oh, I'm nice. I'm going to put these right. highlight tapes out. But now you have to get an appropriate ACT score to match that GPA. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but like you said it's that's the sacrifice that comes with the sacrifice is being able to. You don't gotta be a straight A student. You know what I mean? You know you can be just solid. Like I was solid two seven and just a twenty on the ACT. Like that's not nothing out of the ordinary if you you know if you handling your business. If you like, I can't I can't go out tonight because I gotta study because I know I gotta do whatever on this test. Um, that's where the sacrifices come, man, is it, hanging out. Whether you're going to hang out or you're going to be in the gym. Because, you know, now the game global. So you you <laughs> you keep streaming them games if you want to. There's right. some like, overseas ready, ready to go up. And, you know, especially now that, um, you know, they got NBA Africa about, about to tip off. Uh, that's going to bring a whole new wave of, of players to the game that haven't been able to get that exposure. Yes, sir. Do you have your hand no. in that by any chance? 
Uh, I, I'm looking at it. You know, I, I feel some ways about it with everything going on in, in, in Africa being almost seems like it's being colonized again. So, you know, I, I'll see what happens. Because I know you play for the national team, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that was probably one of my, my greatest moments in my career um, this past summer at the World Cup. You know, hopefully the Olympics will take place, you know, and I'll be able to, to rep the country, um, if all, God willing. So we'll see. Dog, I'm about to go buy me a flag, dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, let's go. <laughs> oh, Jesus, boy. Hey, listen, that needs to go up ASAP. But, yes, all right, I got ahead of myself, man. My bad. I'm getting excited. So, um, back to high school. So, you got what you needed. SA, uh, ACT, you got a 20 on that thing. Then you call coach. Who was, who was approaching you before, before you decided I'm going to go to Mich Michigan? So it was Michigan, uh, both Oklahoma schools, but that was more so, I think, because of my teammate. His name was Obi Manello. Um, Heard of him. Yeah, we, we grew up together. So it was like, a, I, you know, you can come along with him. But I, 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 didn't want it, I didn't want that look for myself. So them and then Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah, mm -hmm. Damo, uh, shout out Dominique Franks. He yes, always sir. talked about you. Obi Manello, and I think he said Sam Bradford as guys that y'all all grew up together just hooping. All grew up, and Sam could have went to OU and played basketball as well. What? Yes. Easy to me, bro. He had. He must have had a strap because he be throwing he that thing. Strap, and he, he he was hella athletic as well. Like a lot of football players that came out of Oklahoma could go both ways, like basketball, football. That's legit. That's like right. the product. Yeah, but it I was like that. You know what's crazy? I don't know. Uh, man, Robert Meacham. Robert Meacham was a dog on the court. Uh, P. Elliott was a dog out of uh, Tulsa that went to OSU for football. Jermaine Gresham. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of guys, man, who could have went. Yeah. Well, it's well, crazy. Man. Dominique as well. Yeah. What if What if y'all would have ganged up somewhere, man? You think y'all would have been a successful team? A hundred percent. Y'all well, one hundred percent. Y'all sold it, didn't y'all? Should have did it. Y'all should have did yeah. it. <laughs> but yeah, we, all, we all ended up where we where we needed to. Absolutely. But yeah. the most important thing I heard from all of this was you wanted to forge your own path. Yes, sir. Was there any fear in deciding to go somewhere else, even though you could have stayed home and played for an uh, Oklahoma team? Yeah, you know it, it's natural. You know you're leaving home. Um, leaving the family, uh, but I, you know, I was fortunate because when I got got to University of Michigan, I was able to find another family and build off of that. Like right now, I'm currently working out in Detroit. Like Detroit's like my second home. Um, so that that's what was great. Um, you know, just opening up and, and being open to being open to people in new situations. All right, so then. You were at Michigan for three years? Two years. Two so years. My first, so I got there my first year. Uh, Coach Tommy Amaker was there. Um, we should have made the tournament, but we lost to Ohio State like two times in a row. And we were, you know, neck and neck going down the stretch. So they fired him. But in that second year, um, John Beeline came in. We was like 9 and 25. You know, he came in with a different type of offense. Uh, and I just was – I wasn't for it. And I, um, at the same time, you know, I've been away. You know, it would be cool to, to see my people come to a game. So that's when I decided to transfer. Um, we had some words. And then, I, you know, I ended up at, at Baylor. I mean, I pretty much picked Baylor because um, they, had, they, they were on the rise after everything that had happened, um, you know, with their past, Scott Drew had them going up and they had Tweety Carter then he was coming in one of my one of the guy who I'm out here uh, celebrating his birthday he was going there Quincy AC um Quincy like Darius, AC, uh, Mr. Pogo stick yeah so they had the they had the building piece and I was like oh yeah I'll be able to fit in fit right in uh, and it worked man and I, I went there you know he had to sit out a year because of the NCAA regulations and then that that year I came back it went up then through the roof through the roof. Through hey, the roof. Shout, out, shout out Quincy AC. He needs to come on the show right after you. So, <laughs> do, do. Yo, you right there. You might just slide him in the room. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you think that Baylor move was the best move for you then? Best like, move. It put you in position for that draft lottery pick and everything like that. 
Yes, sir. I mean, I, I had to put in that work when the year I had to sit out. Um, you know, Baylor is a small school, 10,000 kids, private school, but the basketball facilities was top notch. Um, coaching was great. Uh, one of my favorite coaches of all time, his name is uh, Coach Driscoll. He, right now he's a coach at uh, University of North Florida. So shout out to him. That's my dog. So that's why I work out with a lot. But, you know, Coach Drew, Coach Tame, Coach Mills, shout out to them and everything they're doing. But they put me in the position, man, and we had success. That's that's one of the biggest things. Like, if you ain't like a, a top three pick, you ain't like, you know, taking L's, it's important to win. It's very important to win because that's when everybody gets to see. That's when you get on the, the, the biggest stages, you know? You can't ignore the winners. You can't. You, can. you just can't. <laughs> you shan't <shamed> not. <laughs> okay? And if you do, shame on you. You hear me? <laughs> shame on you. So, Epe, man, was, was, was the league always in a goal for you when you were selecting your college? The league was always a goal. Just playing hoops, man, watching NBC – you know, when Jordan was coming back, man. Playing hey, NBA Live. Yeah, everything, man. NBA Jam, all, Dream Castles out here booming. It, it was it, – I think it's everybody's dream when you, put, you pick up that sport and you, and you fall in love with it. Um, and then it started to come – it started to become real once I – was it? Once I got to Baylor. Because um, my freshman year at Michigan, I, I made some noise. I'm like, yeah, I can play on this level for sure. Um, and then when I transferred, I was able to put that work in. And I went to an Adidas Nations camp, and I was able to do some positive things. Like, yeah, I, this this could be it. Uh, and then going into that year, I knew, yo, let's, let's knock it out the park. Why not? Yeah. Why not? You know what I mean? Uh, so we just had a great year. Elite Eight, you know, a couple of calls here and there. You know, we, we could have been the champs. But, you know, Duke won that year, and then I was, you know, I was able to make it to the NBA. Man, so obviously it was always a goal. So were you eating different all throughout college? Were you – how did you prepare? How did you take care of yourself knowing – I was just trying to eat, get something to eat. <laughs> you know, college was tough, man. You know, uh, what, what was it? Napier? The last Napier, uh, after they won the championship, he, oh. he penned that, that article about not having enough food. Like, that is really a grind, it's you know. Um, it, it's real. So I was just eating what – you know, one of my favorite meals was oatmeal and, and Earl Campbell's hot links mixed together. Yeah. I'm hey, talking I breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It didn't matter. <laughs> when I went to school, I went to a little D2, went to Juco or whatever. And when I went to school, I ate a lot of ramen. And mm -hmm. so people be like, oh, you don't eat ramen now? I'm like, no, I don't eat ramen now. Do you know how much I ate ramen in college? Man. Man. Dog, like, I don't eat nothing that I eat in college no more, bro, except for pizza. You know, you always have pizza on away games. Right. I just bought two big p packages of Top Ramen. It's been sitting on my table for at least two months now. I be thinking I'm going to use it at one point. And I'm just, like, always like, nah, I'm not going to the ramen right now. Yeah, that's, hey, man, but that's the grind, man. We remember that, you know, so that that is beautiful, really. A reminder for sure. <laughs> it's beautiful. Like, man, we was out here really getting to it because we had no other choice. Right. All right, then I'm going to ask you a tough question. Are you for athletes getting paid? 100%. I'm sorry. 100%. I, I 100%. Especially now, man. These kids is coming into college with more followers in the university. Um, oh. You know, and like it, it, it's on another level, and the work that you got to put in—that's another. That's a that's another tough transition from going from high school to college. The the, the intensity in practice, the length of practice. You don't know, have no time to make no extra money. You hear me? And then the college coaches is just doing dumbass drills, man, just to see if you can if you can get through it. Um, <laughs> I definitely. <think. laughs> I definitely think players because it's so hard. Oh, 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 oh. You got an experience you wanna you wanna talk about? Oh, man, I know I ain't gonna say the coach's name, but we had to do a drill where we had to hold bricks and do defensive slides down the bricks? baseline up and like, come on, what are we doing, man? Ain't uh, no bricks in the game, bro. We, we had one one day we had a game, or you know that the the, the scrimmage in front of the fans. Coach talking about whoever loses got to run the big house steps, big house stadium at Michigan. Man, big, that was that's a big stadium. 
Man, that was the worst experience of my life because we lost. <laughs> I mean, it's some. It's just. That's it's the only reason wow. you remember it. I was about yeah. to take that run. <laughs> and it was early in the morning, and and then you expect us to go to class, focus, <laughs> go to lunch, and come back to class, then go practice, then go to study table. I mean, you really working nine to nine. Listen, and I don't think a lot of people understand that grind. So if you're going to have me out here holding bricks, then you got to pay me is what you're saying. <laughs> ain't nobody doing this, man. We ain't building nothing. But, hey, you know, it, it is what it is. But I definitely do believe athletes today in college need to be paid, for sure. I'm for it. I'm for athletes getting paid. I mean, you made a very big point. Students are, or athletes are coming in with more followers than the university. That means they're coming to the fan base. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Coaches is getting millions of dollars while people like us, we ain't need. We eating ramen. You know what I'm saying? To the point where we have PTSD as 30-year-olds don't want to go back eating ramen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> as a reminder. <laughs> you know, that's F.A. Keep it a buck, bro. That's PTSD. We just, <laughs> it's just about food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely for athletes getting paid, man. And um, I see California trying to get on board. I think even Florida trying to get on board. You know what I'm saying? So I hope that gets passed someday soon. You know, I may I might mess around and see if I can use my Haitian passport and go back to college. Give me some money, you know? <laughs> like you know, it and, and it'll be tough to uh for everybody because if one sport gets it, all the sports gotta get it. So there's gonna have, definitely have to be like some type of uh group economics within that. Uh, but I definitely think it, if they can make it work, man, these these kids, man, they, they're dynamic individuals nowadays. Bringing the colleges so much money. That's how they're able to stay Crazy. afloat anyways. Crazy money. And you see how they, even with the pandemic going on, they still setting up the NCAA tournament. They're going to have bubbles. They're about yeah. to have bubbles for college kids. <laughs> you know? like how did, that's crazy, right? But, you know, it is what it is. Million dollars. Go ahead. Uh, you a gamer? No, nah, I used to be, but I, I, I really. So, so, like in college, was you a gamer? Oh, yeah. So, I had to ask you because you are our first NBA player, you know, HBSML's first NBA draft pick. Mm -hmm. um, how was it when you got to, like, finally play with yourself on the video game then? Nah, you know, it's crazy. That's I did. always been, you know, that's always been, you know, the dream. Right. I really did, man. I would go with everybody else, man. I was just happy to see – just see me on the game. I would go <laughs> against me, but I would never be my uh, – pick the team I was on. But wow. that was – it was a dream come true, man. Now, all of that was – for that was special, you know, and to bring the family along, my friend, close friends as well. That was – that's so memorable. Man, man. So would you say that they did you dirty on 2K? Is that why you didn't play with yourself much? No, nah, I just, man, I just ne never wanted to play with my husband. He's like, I'm cool. I'm going to leave it. I know the homies. Yeah. Are, they don't be like, yo, L, I just play with you, whoopie whoop, <laughs> taking pictures, sending it. Like, that made me feel good. <laughs> I, I wouldn't just get on the stick with myself. That's dope. That's mm -hmm. dope. It's, I can only imagine because, you know who Pete Michael is? I would have to see him. Pete Michael, he played a little bit for New York, played in the Euro League, uh, played in the ACB in Spain. But uh, I used to work out with him um, down in Miami. So working out with him, and then one year in 2K, that's I think that was the first year they put the the uh, the overseas team on 2K. Oh, okay. And so I got to pick him on 2K, and I sent it back to him like, bro, this is lit. So I can only imagine what it's like for people to send you that stuff, man. Cause I remember taking those pictures and being that guy to send it to other people. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, that, that, that's special, man. Cause they be so hype, man. And the, you know, and that's, you live to see that. Yeah. Big facts, bro. Big facts. So now that basically now you're a journeyman. Okay. What, what are the places that you've been able to see? I mean, just places that you've been able to see playing basketball. We're going to start off with uh, – so I started off with the Warriors, then got traded to Milwaukee, then uh, one year with the Clippers. During the lockout year, though, the first year I was – I went to Israel for a week, played there for a week, came back. Uh, I think I was still with the Warriors. But after um, 
after who? After the Clippers, I went to Istanbul, Turkey. During that, you know, we went to all the different countries, but on the side, I was able to go to Egypt. Um, I was really able to oh, go to that, How was Egypt? How was Egypt? Because I never really hear anything about anybody being in Egypt. So how was Egypt? Egypt is it is dope. It, it's dope, but you, you see how they ravaged the country for the gold. Mm. Definitely see that you see you see the effects. But to see the pyramids, man, still standing thousands of years later, that's special and spooky at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You got you got earthquakes tumbling buildings. You got these, right. things. and it's like and it's the way it's built is like perfect. And this is back then. You know what I mean? So think about it now. Some architects can't even do that. Can't emulate that to this, to this day. day. Do you know, um, you got some pictures, bro. You have to have some pictures by that uh, pyramid. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I, uh, yeah, we. We had a good time. I had a good time. I went there dolo, actually. Uh, my, the guy who was with me, he couldn't even make the trip. Um, let's see, what else? I was able to go to Israel and really go do the walk of Christ um, and such. That was cool. Uh, been to Spain, uh, with Serbia, Lithuania, what else? Um, I, I know I'm missing some other ones, but then went to China, Beijing, Shanghai, uh, some other cities I can't really pronounce, but I've been, man. I've been <laughs> you know you're doing it big when you can't pronounce it. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been blessed. And then for the past like four years into this uh, pandemic, for three, three or four years, I would go back home to Nigeria um, and kick it there for a week or so. My older brother lives there. Um, so that, that, that was great. Man, what's the one with the F? Um, we tried to pronounce it, we read it. And about to what is it? <laughs> yeah, say that again, please. A Fener, a there we oh, go. I was way off. <laughs> I was like, Bahache? What? <laughs> he said Hibachi. He was hungry. <laughs> Where did B <laughs> sound come from? <laughs> Man, listen, that was that was that was a special time. And that was when for me, that's when I started to change. Like my life changed. To uh, it, to where I started to really see and appreciate the black experience, the African melanated hey. experience across the world and how, then I started to get into, into reading and historical reading and, 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 and things of that nature to back up what I would see. And that, that definitely started to change me, but I had a lot of success, man. I played with possibly the greatest coach of all time and uh, Jericho Brodovich. Um, won a EuroLeague championship. I mean, I won everything that you could win in Europe. Yeah, we seen that. That list went on forever. That's why you have the longest list. I was, you know, I, bro I broke records. You know, I, I did a lot, man. I, and it was a special time, man. We hoop, you know, over there, you know, sports is a little different. They, they, they willing to kill about their clubs. Like, yeah. period. Like, you yeah. know, um, so it was special. I had a lot of success, uh, but yeah, that that was that was a turning point in my life, uh, more so of how I saw the world and how the world viewed me. So, so I know you jumped into the league, but when did you feel like you was gonna be that lottery pick? Like, was there ever a feeling of you like, oh, I'm about to be a lottery pick, or like, uh, how did I, that feeling come? I think uh, so. I hit a wall towards the end of the Big 12 my, that year I played with Baylor. But then conference came, and then the tournament came, and I went up. And I was going up against, you know, supposed to be good teams. And that's when I knew, like, oh, yeah, we, we out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but we out, you know, I'm going to be able to go wherever. But, but hey, we, you know. I just had to ask that question because, you know, a lottery pick, that's, you know, that's also a dream. Do you feel me? Not only playing the video game, but, you know, actually being a lottery pick, you on the stage. So, sure. I'm how, the, how was the feeling, you know, hitting that stage? Like, could you... it, it was great, man. You know, with, with the family there, um, a couple of my friends there, man, going up there and hug David Stern. You know, you just don't see that. You feel <laughs> me? Like, you growing up like, dang, I wonder how that's, that feel. Like, you know, you usually, you usually shake his hand, but I had, just had to give him a hug. Like, man, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we up here. Uh, yeah. So that was. That was special, man. Yeah, that, that was definitely special. You know, if I was to do it again, 
I'll probably just do it in Oklahoma and rely, and just chill. Because yeah. you meet you meet David Stern and, and or Adam Silver, rest in peace to David Stern. R. I. P. Um, but I would probably just do it at home around fam family, you know. So they can all it was, de it was definitely special for my family, everybody to be right. in New York City. So that would have been your prom night then. So if you could do it over again, you'd just turn that into your prom night. Yeah. Rent it out a hotel ballroom and just been with the people that I rock with. Um, that's been with me from the beginning. That's love. Favorite player? You the you the man you are. You had to have somebody who you were like, I'm doing everything he do. Growing up, uh, Akeem Olajuwon. Of course, everybody loved. Uh, uh, Michael Jordan. I mean, that was a given, but KG. KG. I just knew you was going to say KG. I was KG, like, you had to, man. Like, the intensity, man. I don't think anybody will ever play with that type of intensity again, but he was, he was, he was special, man. He had to do it all for that team. He took them to the yeah. conference finals, I believe. Uh -huh. And he was the point guard in that series against the Lakers, the one they lost. Like, that is, that is otherworldly type talent, you know? So yeah, that, that's who I that's who I, I looked up to. That's who I like to watch. And then Tim Duncan, as I got into the league and played against Tim Duncan, you just appreciate his silence. <laughs> you just you gotta appreciate, it, man. You just you know, like don't say nothing. Just look at you like, okay, <laughs> face your ass up, <laughs> glass. <laughs> damn, if not, <laughs> go to the middle, jump, running hook. Uh, fake uh, uh, up and under. He's seven feet. I mean, he got this big knee brace. So you think, uh, yeah, get with him. Uh, let me <laughs> come here, young and let me let me learn you something. I was about to say, I heard it was a little like slick stuff. He said just real slick and quick. He, you know, he wouldn't even say it. he wouldn't not to me. But as you watch, man, I was on the Clippers team when we beat the we beat the Spurs in seven games. CP got hurt, and to see him work, <laughs> man. <laughs> what he yeah, had to scratch his head <laughs> <laughs> to watch him pregame like for, in, in that playoff series every game except for game one because he didn't know what to, to expect you know he, he hadn't played because it's a different intensity after game one every pregame workout was what he did in the game and he was do how do you want it that's cold how do you and I'm just like I do my workout whatever and I'm just sitting there watching them and then he go into the game. The coach I watching him with, I'm just looking at him like, bro, he just did that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's a bad. And he's 34 at this time, so he's moving slower, but he's still getting where he wants to get to. It man, that was greatness. Was there any time you got a chance to ever even like do workouts with him? Maybe in the off season, or anything? Uh, I don't even know how to. I, you know what? That that was one of my downfalls. I was I was living life. You know, as you should, right? As you should, for sure. Um, I was living life in the other part for any young player. I wasn't continuing to set goals. That's the that's the key. You know what I mean? Had that dream, have that goal, get to the NBA. But then, what's the next goal? What what what's this? You know, every season, what you're going to improve on? So that that's big. And as a young star, I would tell, just continue to set goals, no matter oh, what. Yeah, you we want, go, yeah, let them go. You know, you want, you want to be a starter, cool. Get to a starter, now what's the next goal? You want to get on varsity, cool. You on varsity, now I want to play. I want to be this eighth man. Now I'm the sixth man. Now I'm starting, you know, now I'm that guy. I go to college, same thing. I get to whatever professional level I can get to, same thing. You know, because, you know, if you don't make it to the NBA, you don't make it to the NBA. In basketball, there's leagues everywhere, and you can right. eat, and your family can oh, eat. Oh, there it is then. Do you feel like you plateaued after you got there? Yes. More so, I plateaued after I got traded. You know, I was up and down. I, after I got drafted, I, I had to get surgery on my left wrist. So I was out for like six months, came back, up and down. Second year, I started off up and down. But then I was a stretch where I was like, okay, I kind of I figured it out. You were starting. Get, yeah. And then I got traded to Milwaukee, and I just, I couldn't, I just lost it. And then I had some injuries. What was it about being traded that that just gave you problems? I just wasn't ready for it. And, you know, it's a business. But you thinking, like, oh, I'm about to be here forever. You know, it's the team that drafted me. Dang, I've hit this 
I'm starting to hit this uh, this incline. I'm starting to get better and better game in, game out. Bam, you get traded. And I'm just not even – I'm just sitting on the couch that same night. Like, man, what what's going on? Right. You know, go to Milwaukee. Um, I was able to play. I, I did have a little bit of success. Uh, then I was – then I had to deal with injuries. Um, I just wasn't able to shake back. Then when I got to the Clifford, I didn't play. Then I went overseas uh, and got active again. Yeah, because you was able to you was able to come back several times. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Things. Yeah, I mean, I've had a, <laughs> I've had a, a a solid career. Not what I thought it would be, but it's been solid. I, you know, I can't really be, be too upset. You know, my parents are retired. You know, we pretty much do almost what we want. Um, and that's just because of the grind, you know what I mean, um, and what I've been able to do. And I'm still playing. I've, I've, gave, I've been in the game for 10 years, um, probably got about three, four left in me, and I'm going to put them shoes up. And but just that's key. A lot of people can't say they done it that long, or you feel you know me, take I mean? care of much you took care of, you know. So, like you said, solid sound great to me. You feel me? So, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've been blessed, man. You know, I, I've had to look at myself in the mirror. Um, and deal with myself. You that uh, dude, Epe. You that dude. Relationship <laughs> <laughs> with yourself, like it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta ask you, Epe. Top three favorite NBA teammates. NBA teammates. Who? Uh, Jamal Crawford. Hey, hey that is my dog. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> I, I love that dude. That's a good dude. Um. It's a lot of teammates, man. Hold on, let me see. Uh, Darrell Wright, because we still got a good relationship to this day. We were with the Warriors. Uh, uh, Karan Butler was real cool. We still, you know, if I tap in with him. Hey, yo, um, listen, F.A., Karan Butler, I was reading his story. He's got a crazy background story. Crazy story. Real how basketball saved my life story, if you know what I mean. 100%. <laughs> he's not afraid to tell it, and he's like he's doing really. He's very. I'm, I I want to say powerful because he's making power moves right now. Right. Um, so it's, spe- it's special to see, and then I can hit him, and he'll still tap back in. So that that's dope to see. That's love. Uh, yeah, that's real. Uh, I'd say Kyle Korver. I'm real cool with him. Yeah, real good dude from what I've been hearing. Yeah, Kyle Korver is real cool. Who else? I'm cool. I mean, you know. When I was with the Jazz, I mean, I'm still cool with Donovan and Royce. Those are still my – those are my guys. Those are my young guys. Uh, Joe Ingles, he's real cool. Um, I mean, I've had some dope, dope teammates. Monte Ellis, he was – Hey, um, I wish he was still in the league, dog. He's so cold to me. Yeah, he was – he was – yeah, yes. Yes, he is cold still, probably. I bet. I bet. So, here you go. Who was the first player to bust your ass in the NBA? <laughs> oh, man. It, 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 it's either Louis Scola. Ola. It, man, Scola was tricky. <laughs> he was tricky. He was sneaky and good. He's sneaky, bro. Angles. He really understood angles. Um, Lamar Aldridge. I, str- I struggled with Lamar Aldridge early. The fadeaway. And then and he's 12, so he fading yeah. away. He, he's tough. He shoots the ball so high. And then I was with the Warriors. There was a game in Oklahoma City where I was guarding KD towards the end. It was the switching. And I swear I was on every move. My hand was right there, no matter what I did. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> I'm just looking like, I mean, there's not much more I could do, y'all. Like straight up, there's not much more I can do. What What do the coaches say when you know when when them situations happen? Because you know it ain't much you can do. They know it ain't much you can do. But do they still got to be like, come on, FA, blah blah blah? Mm, because in the NBA, you understand like some people are just that good, and when they get it going, it don't matter. It don't matter what you do. They really like it don't. Like especially when you know with post players, okay, maybe you can come double. But then you got somebody like KD at the top of the key. It's just hard to come double because he just has he and pull right over everybody on the court. And now he's become a really good passer, too. I can't wait to see him play next year. 
I don't know how it's going to look with Kyrie, uh, and they have a lot of talent, so I don't know how it will look. And a new coach. And a new coach, young coach. Uh, but I'm eager to see KD, what he looks look like this year. He's actually I, my favorite player to watch. Mine is Braun. Speaking of Braun. <laughs> Speaking of You know, it ain't no, it ain't no basketball conversation if Braun don't come up. Twan don't like that. You know, I listen. <laughs> but love and respect what LeBron's doing. I mean, you can't deny his greatness. You can try to, but you, the more you do, it's just the young man becomes silly because of, of his career. Um, of course, the only blemish he has are the finals um, with his record, but he's about to get number four tonight. And he has he has a role. He has the best road dog he's had in his career, in my opinion. AD. I agree. AD, I don't know what has gotten into him, but he's acting different. <laughs> <laughs> different, different. <laughs> he's giving, he's giving you side steps. He's giving you threes. He's giving from trade though. Yeah, and like, so who do you put on him? Because it's always some, someone like a mismatch. Whoever you put on him, he's playing defense at a high level. Um, that, that's one thing that will probably upset LeBron. I think LeBron will have a big game because he know that finals MVP is a, is a tight race between him and AD. he wants it. AD knows okay. that this is his this is his opportunity. He better take it now. He's been put in that in that spot for a reason. Right. And I think AD and LeBron, they're going to have a chance to run it back next year and the year after that. Mm-hmm. Of course, everybody wanted to see that matchup with the Clippers. <laughs> Uh, you know, the Clippers tricked it all. Um, they sure did, man. I ain't going to stunt, okay. F.A. I ain't going to stunt. Had the Clippers gotten that matchup, they probably would have won it, bro. I said I wanted Dallas to beat them. I wanted somebody to beat them because if they didn't play the Lakers, I knew the Lakers was going to take it. Yeah, and the Lakers have just walked through ever since. I don't know if the Clippers – something about the Clippers was off in the bubble. Pandemic. Never, you know, they were never all together, you know, um, People had some debts in the family, and so they came later. But they, and then you could tell like there was this friction while they was playing. Like it never looked like they were playing hard. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah, it was tough. I, I really wanted to see the Celtics play um, the Lakers just because they have the scoring. Um, that would have put pressure on on the Lakers. But you know, hey, congrats to LeBron, man. He about to get them both. <laughs> Try to crown yeah. him. He about the ah didn't say that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I did not go that far. Um, but yes, so man. So I, I take it he's not your goat. He's close. I mean, he's because it's almost it's almost going to become the undeniable um, just because he's doing all the stats and all of that. But when you, you just hey, Manny. It's just when you see Jordan, man, and what you, what he was able to accomplish, his frame, uh, you know, Jordan really has skill. Like to me, LeBron, LeBron has gotten better as he gotten older. But like, I mean, my man was out, the fadeaway was unstoppable. Go to the basket, have his tongue in in the sky. And you know, LeBron is truly probably the greatest physical specimen that we've seen. That's it. Uh, but you know, I mean, hey, rightfully so. He's gonna be like like one A, one B. But of course, I'm 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 always gonna probably say Jordan. I mean, if he runs off, either. The, the uh, had, even though he was the doppelganger. The, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <straight up>. <laughs> <laughs> if, if somehow Braun runs off three championships, like if he can do a three P yet, I mean, you won't be able to say anything. It'll be tough. But I mean, with AD, uh, is hey, you know the thing about this year. LeBron ain't have to deal with no like team foolishness. Right. Like, you know, like you usually hear some friction within the team. This year he's just been hooping, doing what he's been doing off the court, which has been great. And, and they know they all gonna get traded if there's any more friction. Wow. Yeah, I mean they did trade the whole team for A B and it's paying off greatly. Hey. <laughs> Man, I wanna say this about Jordan and we can move on to the next question. When I watched the last dance, and I saw that his whole front office was against him for the majority of their run together with Pippen. Mm-hmm. That's when I gave him more respect. Because to do that and be like, oh, you want to trade us? Take this W. 
you want to trade us? Take this championship and this finals MVP. I was like, bro, that's next level. Oh, so, yeah. It, it, he's, man. And he ran. He just ran through the finals like it was not, like it was nothing. Tough shot. It don't matter how, how you want it. They were spinning. Beat up. Knocked out. You know, and you know what's funny? Like, people were like, you know, Jordan wasn't really going against nobody in the early whatever when he first started going. But then as that last three-peat, he was going against some dogs. That was our era. Right. That last three-peat was our era. Uh-huh. He was going against some mom, and guess what he was doing? <laughs> we all seen the last shot. You know, it, it is what it is. Yes. But for sure, 1A, 1B, I mean, you know, Kobe Bryant is still there. I mean, people don't talk about Kareem. I mean, Kareem was doing – he was unstoppable. Yeah. Uh, he definitely should get more love. Uh but, yeah, man, it, it, it's great to see. I don't, really don't want to talk about LeBron as much because we're still witnessing it. Exactly. So I just want to appreciate it while it's still here. Uh, and when he done, you know. It's tough, though. They don't show the big man as much love as they should. They don't. I mean, I my mean, man, yeah. he was doing fake running hooks from almost a three-point line. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's – <laughs> running hooks. <laughs> you know, so like, you don't even see that move for real no more. Nah. <laughs> I don't think no one can even do it. I, right. I get to really hit it to perfection. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. No, nah, for yeah. real. <laughs> so, so here, here's a question for you. What has basketball really, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but this is my segue back to getting back on track here. What has basketball really done for you that maybe you wouldn't be able to do you know, if you didn't pick up that orange. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> the living life. Besides the living life. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I just think basketball discipline, uh, especially at an early age, without it, I don't know where I would have gotten that discipline. Um, being humble, the grind, the competition. Um Basketball was giving me everything because it was no – I was into computers, but I didn't really rock with math. So that wasn't for That was a no-go then. <laughs> right. So, like, for me, if people say, what was your major? I say basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Factory. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, going back now, I'd probably try to do physical therapy just so trainers can, you know, talk over my head when something was going on. But man, that basketball is really right. That's a gym you just dropped. Players, if you're listening, go get that physical therapy because injuries is part of the game. You know, if you are, if you are able to go through the game without any type of injuries. I had a surgery. Twan had a surgery. Elf, you had a surgery. You know what I'm saying? We three for three already. So that's a gym you just dropped. Yes, sir. Uh, but yeah, basketball is giving me everything, man. It's just to see my parents smile and be happy because they work so hard, you know, to, to immigrate from Nigeria um, and just to give us a, a, a chance, just to give, you know, we're talking about myself, just to give me a chance to do what I'm doing. And I'm, you know, forever indebted. So just to see them smile, full event. you know, and, and do whatever they want to do at, at the moment, that, that, that brings me joy. That's awesome, man. Well, is there anything, um, what message would you have for the young, aspiring basketball players out there? Stay on track, man. When, you, when you're running, don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just keep running towards that finish line. Don't get caught up in the rankings. Just put that work in. Get in that court. Try to go up against older guys. Ask for tips. You know, don't be afraid to reach out um, to, to different guys that you may look up to and, you know, ask for tips. You never know what you could get that response, and that that could change your outlook. But just keep grinding, man. Just don't don't get caught up in the whole rankings. Don't get caught up in it. Man, at the end of the day, they get early, they get <laughs> early these days. Fourth grade, fourth, it's like what, fourth what, in what, what, what are we doing? And <laughs> fourth kids grade are, rank kids number one. On they test out like, yeah, I'm number one <laughs> in the country. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, and then FA they stopped growing in the sixth grade. Then what? And then it, and then it's all downhill. So just <laughs> man, just, just look for it and, and put that work in because you know somebody else is is doing the work somewhere in the world. Um, and continue to set them goals, man, and believe in something bigger than you. 
Man, that's fire, man. Normally right now, we would uh, have you sign our ball. But since we're not in person, you got to let us know next time. Hey, yo, here you go right there. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, we need we need your signature. You're the first NBA. I'm going to pull up first on your draft pick. I'll be back. I'll be back in the city in, in, in a few weeks. So I'll, I'll definitely pull up and we'll, we'll, we'll tap in and continue to build. All right. Sure. All right. Man, you uh, you came through, man, and you dropped major gems. Um, we appreciate that. We salute you, man. Have fun in Cancun. And hey, hey. one more thing. No, I appreciate that. One more thing, yeah. man, but for these young athletes coming up, um, pay attention to what's going on. Man, be aware about the world. Be aware of what's going on. Read the newspapers. Um, like start learning about money early. Uh -huh. um, and, and, and don't 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 be afraid of the skin that you're in. Facts. And, and, and those that may walk past you. Everybody has a story. You need to be able to kick it with everybody else's, no matter what. And, and never turn your back on your community. That's Fire. real. Fire, that's a gym. I mean, you know, you gotta be able to be a good teammate. So therefore, you know, you gotta be able to get along with everybody. Yes, so, sir. Be comfortable in the skin you in. F.A., man, I wish we didn't have to let you go, man. I'm enjoying myself, but I know the Lakers got to go get that dub. Oh, Lord, how did we get back to that? I don't know. Hey, <laughs> hey this is what I deal with, G. This is what I deal with. Hey, and man. I'm the wrong person because I speak my mind. Like my life jacket, this ice in my veins is something titanic. Lockdown defense kept me out the center for detention. Divine intervention passes over to my center. Alleyways are the alley use. Some got no looks and passed away when somebody shoot. Back in court, duo, but nobody hoops. The wrists follow through when the cuffs got a loop. Pick a book or pick the bank get book. It's just you and I out running suicides. Me, I was out running suicide. Boy, I'm going in, dropping gems that I picked up in these gems. I can't slack, I've been down and back. I'm just trying to share a few tales from this thing called life. Count my assists, man. I swear that basketball really saved my life. Yeah, uh, yeah. I swear it saved my life. Let's go.